Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. We're in the middle of the uh, auto saw project that you can see here in the background, but uh, I had a customer call up with this bracket right here. And this is a pretty good example of some of the work that I, uh, I actually really like doing, especially for customers where you know you're really helping them out. Um, now, you can judge this guy if you want to, but the reality is, you know, this is a piece where he had some problems with a fit and he ended up changing to a larger universal joint and that required a larger diameter bushing and so it just got jerry-rigged and, and it got ground and they put in sleeves and, it, and the, it walked on it and it tore it up pretty bad. So it is what it is and uh, at this point the, the bracket uh, totally failed and so wanted it fixed and I said nah let's just, uh, let's just make a new one, no big deal at all. But it should be a fun project. Now there's one interesting constraint to this part, which is that the right side of the part does not, is not able to uh, be thickened at all, nor can anything protrude beyond it. So as we look and we try to mate the universal joint into it, you normally use a shoulder bolt, but to have a thread purchase on the other side is going to be difficult, especially threading up to a shoulder. Now I don't have the machine here to show you, but Let's hop over to the CAD model here, we'll show you what I came up with. Here is our model. Uh, first off, I love McMaster Car. Great company, great customer service, but here's another reason. The universal joint is right here. The customer provided the part. I hopped onto McMaster, did a very quick search uh, of the universal joint based on its uh, ID of the ball swivel itself and found the part and click on product detail and not only can you download the CAD model but it's an actual 3D SOLIDWORKS file. So when we, if we hop into SOLIDWORKS and open the part itself, it's really cool. You can see how they made the part in SOLIDWORKS and heck, if you're trying to use CAD, it's actually a great way to learn to back into some of this stuff. The other thing that's really helpful is it lets me ensure as I use this joint that I've got clearances between the universal joint and the bracket uh, both here and on the rotational points here. The task at hand is to make this part beefier uh, and better. The current version was out of aluminum so that tells me that anything out of steel is going to be a big improvement. The existing part had a shoulder bolt which started on the right hand side and was threaded on this thin portion on the left hand side. What happened was the bushings wore, the sleeves wore, and then the thread started walking and it just tore itself apart. So in understanding the requirements of the machine and the part, the machine is right on the left hand side of this part. So we cannot add much to this left side. We can't add a bolt head, a nut, a increased material thickness for threading, etc. So I also want to make this part relatively quickly and not over engineer it. So we're going to make the part out of steel and then what I did is I came up with this little bracket here or sorry this little uh, uh, threaded rod sort of homemade shoulder bolt just a 5 8 shaft we'll thread this 3 8 16 and then we'll quickly machine this hex head on the Tormach CNC mill and that will be a slip fit through there and we'll just use a nut on the other side. There'll probably be a washer in there too. And uh, oh, the other thing I thought I would do for fun, I had a lot of folks talk about deburring on a CNC mill. Since folks are asking, I thought we would use the uh, CNC mill to, to deburr this part here for fun and uh, hopefully get this banged out here pretty quick. Let's take a quick look at the cam. A couple different operations here. The shaft is the most important, so we're going to start with that. We're going to spot it, drill a 9 16 clearance hole, bore it to 5 8 and then we'll use a quarter inch end mill to uh, machine the rough machine, the hex slot, a, one, a quarter inch end mill to profile the radius here, 1 8 inch end mill to clean up the insides, and then we will chamfer the outside. I will show you how that's done. You simply select the, the path itself. I'll show you, start over here, like so. Click curve and then turn off the offset. So now it hugs it. Now we know that that's at Z0. What we'll do, first of all, we'll set up our engraver, which is for me tool 25, it's a quarter inch four flute. You um, 
you choose engraver, it defaults to putting something in the D, switch that to zero, put in 45, that gives you your 45 degree tip. And parameters, what we do is we'll come down 50 thou, but we'll come, we'll put 35 thou of stock on it. And what that does, we'll, we'll zoom in here, is it means you're not engraving with the tip. So if you can see the profile, the tool is 35 thousands out on all directions, but you're coming down 50 thou, which I like. It means you're not machining with the very tip of the tool. Slow that down a little, just like so. You can see it right there. Kind of using the middle of the tool itself. Good for tool life too. So uh, real quick here, we'll show the whole thing in simulation. I, I really am happy with Sprout Cam and uh, uh, at least it's now very quick for me to efficiently make parts uh, with it in the Tormach. So very, very happy with that. So again, real quick spot, drill, bore, quarter inch hex, profile, eighth inch cleanup, and chamfer the outside. What we'll then do is open up the other part and we will machine, let's see here. We're gonna machine the half of this slot. It's an inch and a quarter, which is for me too deep to wanna to do without flipping the part. And because it's um, not, you know, I'll be able to hold tolerances fine flipping the part on this one. Um, so what we'll do, walk through real quick. I want to remove a lot of this material with a drill bit and Sprout Cam, I, there's a way to use the 2D geometry and I've never liked it actually. So what I did quite quickly was made a part in SolidWorks called the drill guide part with just two holes and I use that if you see it was those holes, look at the bottom of the part, they're right snug inside that. So what we do, turn that back off, and that lets me have two half inch holes that I can use to rough out a lot of that material. Same thing, 9 16 and bore this hole, it also is 5 8 and then we will 2D contour this and do a quick chamfer cleanup. Or a quick simulation. Spot, 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 half inch drills, 9 16 here, then bore it, and then 2D contour this. This, uh, the piece I had of material on hand was 12L14, so it cuts like butter. Not the strongest steel in the world, but again, the part with the bracket was aluminum before, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. And then a quick cleanup and chamfer like so. Let's hop over to the machine. Okay, I've got a block already machined up that's uh, one and a quarter by one and a quarter by 2.8. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, put it in our vise here, and grab my favorite tool here, the, uh, the Heimer uh, probe, and come down here and set our zero. All right, there's my X. Zero the Y. And then we'll do the Z. Boom. Okay, starting with a uh, half inch spotting drill. Let's rock and roll. I love when you run twist drills at the right speed. You can totally feel it. It makes a nice chip. And I, I, I gotta say, running anything over half inch, in my opinion, uh, at least for you know, novice machinists like myself, you, uh, you, know, you get a little jittery because it takes a lot of oomph. You know, you're only turning this at 550 RPMs, uh, but it, as you can see, turns beautifully. And, and you know, 12L14 isn't the hardest thing out there. All right, so now let's grab our boring head.
I forgot I had that on a drilling cycle and a packing, which I don't want to do. All right, let's try that again. We'll squirt of oil. I'm spinning at 1200 RPMs and only feeding it uh, 0.75 inches a minute. So real slow, no rush here at all. Um, we'll go ahead and fast forward, but it, we'll take a look afterward. I can already tell that it looks like a pretty nice surface finish. So happy with that. All right, now without uh, stopping our footage, let's see, uh, let's see how we did. I've got a snap gauge here. Okay. Looks like I am one thou over. We can read that. Yeah, one thou over, so I'm okay with that. We try our shaft in there, real nice fit actually, real nice fit. and a 1 8 end mill just to clean it up. And we'll chamfer or deburr or whatever you want to call it. It's funny, a lot of folks have asked me about the tool changer. Don't get me wrong, Tormark tool changer is awesome, but it's kind of funny. I would probably not use it on a lot of jobs because it's so darn quick with the power drawbar to change tools. Sweet. Not a uh, half bad looking part here. Let's keep going. Okay, we rotated our part. We've got the second cam op set up. Let's rock and roll. We'll spot first. Drill some half inch holes. I'd be lying if I didn't, if I said I uh, had realized that first hole was going through largely clearance material already. So uh, I, you know, a little bit of a goof there because uh, obviously the cam simulations between the two programs didn't overlap. Yeah, you know, not a big deal, but uh, really didn't need to drill this first half inch hole. All right, uh, nine sixteenths. Let's bore that out. Sorry folks, I goofed on that boring footage, but uh, nevertheless, let's uh, dive in here. We've got a quarter inch, four flute carbide end mill. Let's rock and roll.
And one final cleanup pass. Now for our deburr, and we'll be done with that side. Okay folks, I'm gonna flip this, machine the other half of this uh, off video because uh, you've seen the rest of this. Let's hop over to the Emco lathe and start turning our bushing. Actually, this is complete overkill, but hey, why not? Um, I, love, I love handing off parts to customers that look great. There's a little bit of mill scale left on that top side. Uh, I've got a service grinder now, let's use it. So we'll come over here, rough set our height here. We'll start uh, left to right, increase that speed. Now I'm not doing this to prove any squareness or flatness or anything of the sort. Again, just having fun here. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll stop fooling around here with service finishes and uh, let's go uh, turn that part on the lathe. Okay, we've got a piece of 4140 chucked up in the lathe. We're gonna turn down uh, the first half inch to 375, which we'll then use a, just gonna use a die to, uh, to thread it. And then we'll have about an inch long shaft that's the 5 8 and we'll leave a bit of a, a one inch piece here. We'll throw this in a 5C call, hop back over to the mill where we will uh, machine our hex pattern into it. I knew that insert was old. I just threw a new one in and I didn't realize just exactly how bad that was. We'll take a 50 thou uh, depth. Works for me. Okay, we've got a 3 8 shaft turned. We'll thread that at the end. We're gonna now turn this down to 5 8 so the way I do this, nothing fancy, touch off. Set your dial to zero. Now, one inch minus 0.625 is 375, divided by two is 1875. So 187 on my dial. So I'll come in 50 and I wanna mark a little spot here. See how we did. Okay, perfect on the uh, dimension there, or perfect within, you know, three, four thou, that's all I needed. So we will turn this down another 50 and so forth till we sneak up on our 5 eighths. Be right back. Okay, I've roughed it in. Let's throw our dial on there. Okay, we are about 11 or so under. So I'll take one more rough pass and we'll really come up tight on it. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Okay, we're about a little under six over. 
So I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna assume that's five, so I'll take two and a half or so, and then what we'll do is we'll just give it a quick file to deburn, and we'll actually grab our parts and see how they fit. Actually, let's uh, grab our file here. Now you can't see me easily, but I'm standing out of the way. We'll slow it down. With the tang is not going into the palm of my hand, so just got to be safe when you do this. Okay. Looks like we might even be a tenth under. How's that for a fit? Okay, well now I've done it. Sorry, that was uh, embarrassing. Uh, I literally just filed uh, a hair more off and now the universal joint is a great fit. It's hard to see if that's gonna wobble or not, but the, the other part is easy to see. Slips on and barely any play in it. Um, yeah, so very happy with that. Like so. Okay, so let's uh, thread this end here. Okay, I've got the die set up. So I'm going to try to get some fluid on there and inside the actual die. And I've got my uh, tailstock floating. And you know what? My hand's probably going to be in the way, but uh, the workpiece takes priority over the video, folks. So uh, you know what? I'm going to actually just uh, be right back in a minute after this is done. <laughs> Remind me to single point that next time. Those, uh, those bigger uh, dies, well, hell, three-eighths isn't even that big, are, are harder to run by hand. Anyways, worked great. Not real nice nut fit on that. No, no play at all. So happy with that. So now we can part this off, and I'll, I'll see you over at the mill where we will uh, machine that hex into it. Okay, coming down home stretch. I've got it in a 5C collet, and I've got the zero set and program loaded up. Let's rock and roll. One finish pass to clean it up. All right, I'll see you back at the bench. Let's take a look at this final part now. All right, folks, here we are. Um, I actually do have to replace these two set screws right here, but uh, I'll do those in the morning. I want to wrap up filming here tonight. It turned out beautifully, if I do say so myself. Uh, looks nice. You can see, I'll take it apart here a second, you can see the fit. Our shaft is a great fit. You can see, you can feel and see that, which is great. Um, you're going to laugh. I actually don't even own a 3 8 washer that I know of, which is kind of silly. But that's a half inch for now. You can see how nicely that fits in. I'll show you without the uh, universal joint in there. Just like so. We've got enough thread relief, more than we probably, more than we need, but that's okay. Like so. And you can see that nice surface finish from the uh, service grinder. So uh, I love this stuff. Heck of a fun project. I know the customer really appreciate getting the machine back up quickly and hope you guys learned something along the way. As always, I appreciate the likes, the feedback, the comments, the shares, all that good stuff. And I'll try to, uh, I'll try to get uh, focused back here on this auto saw. Otherwise, that's all for tonight, folks. Take care. See you soon.